My name is Tony Hatch. My Indian name is Goots Kadab, uh, from Tulalip, Washington here, the Tulalip tribes. And most of the artwork that I do is Coast Salish um, drawing, painting, uh, carving style, Coast Salish art. So the reason I, uh, uh, I fell in love with Coast Salish art, I, I've always been interested in uh, different kinds of art. And I remember uh, in the early 90s, uh, everybody that uh, I idolized, that I looked up to that was uh, doing coastal art, a lot of their artwork was, was uh, more of the northern style, the, the form line. When it came, came time to have a gentleman by the name of Roger Fernandez uh, come down and offer a class that uh, where he talked about the differences between northern style coastal art and Coast Salish from down this area. I was uh, excited to learn that. He started doing, a, he did a, a whole lesson plan that was that he was able to come here and teach us through uh, Northwest Indian College. Basically, it was, there were three shapes that were consistently used in Coast Salish art. They weren't the only shapes that were used, but they were three shapes that were uh, the majority used in, in any of the old, old pieces of art that they'd found, anything that was preserved and it's really hard to preserve things in our area because we're so wet and everything gets, anything carved out of wood, if it gets buried in the dirt, it dissolves and you lose a lot of the, the design work. But he was able to, uh, he and whoever else he learned from was able to look at a lot of Coast Salish designs and see the three consistent ones were a perfect circle um, just a, a circle and it could be any size, big, small, uh, they could overlap each other and uh, they would use those for, for fish eggs, eyeballs, different, different things like that. And then he had a, a crescent, like a crescent moon and those crescents could be short, they could be long and skinny, they could be short and fat, but they were a crescent like you see, a, um, like a a moon shape. And then uh, he introduced a, a shape that I wasn't used to and it was and uh, he called it a trigon. And basically it's a a triangle that looks like the walls are being sucked into the center. And um, it's uh, like a concave walled triangle and uh, it's called a trigon. And again those can be different uh, short, fat, long, and skinny, and they're just, they're used to create um, different shapes inside of whatever piece of artwork you're trying to do, um, whether it be salmon, killer whales, uh, eagles, any of those, a lot of those, a lot of those three shapes are involved in there. And what he, he also discussed in Coast Salish art uh, the term negative shapes. He would draw a um, a series of these three shapes, uh, circles, crescents, and trigons, and he would put them in a specific order to where in the negative you would see an image pop out. And and it was like, wow, that that's that's amazing. And he and I told him that I go, wow, that that is amazing. And he says, yeah, literally we drew circles, crescent shapes, and trigons. But what you see in the negative is what we're looking for. And that makes the difference. He said Northern style and any of the, anything that I ever studied about Northern style, they're real specific. They have specific rules that they have to identify different different animals or different uh, different shapes and a lot of that is because they they use them for their clans 
and they want to make sure that they're not crossing with anything else. So if you're an Eagle clan, you make sure that your Eagles are specific. You have rules that you follow. One thing that uh, was unique about us down here as opposed to Northern style, up North, I, like I said, they have to have specific things that are real regimented on, on what they are. For They want you to know, if I'm looking at a Raven, I know that that's a Raven. Down here, it's um, like a specialty. It's like like a, each person's got their own talent and it, it, in a village. And whether you're a plank maker for a, a house plank or a basket weaver or a canoe carver, not everybody can do those types of things. And sometimes when you're, you're an artist, you would look at a piece of art and the artist would know exactly what it was. Here, uh, somebody, uh, an artist or a carver would, would make something and it would, uh, somebody would say, what is that? And a lot of times the, the reaction might be, what is it to you? Uh, what does it mean to you? They're not gonna give away that, you know, exactly what it is, you know. They know what it is, they know what it represents. Uh, it could have been, um, something that came to them in a, in a dream. It could have been a, um, a spiritual being uh, that, that uh, was there to help somebody and they, they wanted to, to make sure that uh, they didn't forget that, you know, that, to, of what they looked like in, you know, in their dream or when they went for their, uh, their spirit guide, um, went swimming or, you know, the different things. So these, these artists, they would put them down for a specific thing and they wouldn't volunteer exactly what that is, you know? And, and it was like, uh, I, I don't know how to compare it, but it, it, it's like, that's mine and I'm, and I'm rich because I have that, I know that and not everybody else knows what it is, you know? And so they don't, they wouldn't uh, share that unless it was something, uh, just, um, I don't want to say obsolete, but just something that is out there for a certain dance, you know, if it's a, um, a bear dance or, you know, then you know that that is a, a bear, you know, on a mask or, or a, a drawing or, you know, artwork like that. Well, when, uh, when Roger first started he said just practice these shapes these designs and then uh, he goes just fill a page he says fill fill a page with these with these designs and he goes then sit back and look at it and you'll see something will appear in that in that page that you didn't even intend to draw and sure enough there were I, I filled a page, we all, we all kind of filled a page and I set it up, turn it, set it, look at it, turn it, look at it. And pretty soon you're seeing like bird heads with, you know, long beaks and, and just different um, water designs and, and just shapes and they're, they're flowing together and, and um, then you take your pencil and you kind of draw that out and say, look, look at this in here, you know. Um, it took, it took a while to get my style down of artwork. And I, and I really, really try to, a lot of people try to move forward and go super contemporary, um, anything because it's popular and it might sell or, you know, something like that. Uh, personally, I, and I'm nothing against that, you know, if you, if you can do that, do your thing, you know. Personally, I try to uh, stay as true to Coast Salish art as I can, whether it, it looks a little bit crude or elementary, I guess sometimes, you know, but um, as opposed to whatever's out on the market or something, but um, I try to try, try to stay as true to the, to the art style as I can, um, just because I'm a believer in, in um, keeping it alive, you know, what, what it used to be, you know, rather than moving us beyond and, and forgetting what it used to be. 
I think both styles are, are uh, very beautiful, northern, northern style, form line. Um, I, as a little kid, I would, that's what I would copy out of books and, and I, I think everybody did that, you know, because they thought we were coastal, coastal natives. But now, um, since we've learned a little bit about uh, Coast Salish shapes and designs and, and things like that, we're, we're kind of uh, changing our style a little bit. You're seeing more and more younger artists come in and come up with really, really great designs. Uh, as far as a favorite, I just love Coast Salish art, you know, and I try to, try to um, keep it around and preserve it. And, and like everything else, it's not mine. It's my, I learned it to, because I love it, and it's my job to pass it on to the next generation so that it'll stay alive. A lot of my artwork is uh, is based off of uh, around the water. Or we are uh, the people of the water. You know, spent a lot of time on the canoes, uh, traveled uh, the old highways, I guess you can call them before before there were uh, all these roads and and uh, street lights and cars and everything. The, the old highways were were the uh, the waterways, and and so we did a lot of traveling and. And uh, I love that that quote that they talk about when the when the tide is out the the dinner table set you know and so all of those different things that sustained us as as people and kept our our ancestors alive and in order to bring us to where we are today you know I was just able to do a uh, a Coast Salish design of uh, for my nephew Jordan of uh, he wanted to get a tattoo and. Lately, that's, I've been drawing tattoos for people in, in Coast Salish, and I got, I'm covered myself with my own artwork. But um, of our, uh, he, he had a fisherman. He's a fisherman, and he, and he wanted to, to have a Coast Salish uh, fisherman pulling on a net. And so we worked on a design, and, and he's going to put some salmon and crab and everything else in there, you know. So it just... Uh, the artwork is, that I do is, is uh, real reflective because it's Coast Salish and it's from this area, it is reflected on, on who we were as a people, you know, and, and all of the history, everything that uh, I've ever read or been told, visiting with the elders and things like that. It, it all gets stored up, up here and, and eventually I'll, I'll remember that and I'll put it down on paper. But uh, yeah, our, our culture is a huge influence. Our, who we are as a people, um, where we came from. I love I love quotes because they always bounce back into my head, and um, I love the one that uh, I'd heard before. It's uh, moving forward while looking back. You, we don't have a choice. We have to move forward um, to keep up in this world, but never forget who you are and where you come from.